corpse looks at you with bulging white eyes. The face around them does not look human. It's swollen and ready to burst. His lips are fish-like and his tongue like a ball gag in his mouth. You seem to be holding your breath. A cargo belt twists his neck at an unnatural angle. The body below appears stiff. It's letting out an ungodly rot. The smell seeps in even through your clenched nostrils. Active decay. It took it to throw up of his own. No one is judging. He's about to blow! Cock's gonna blow, Kuno! There are several footprints in the mud, left by work boots. Anywhere from six to twelve pairs have walked here. Heavy workers' boots with reinforced toes and hobnails all over the yard. Isn't this something an industrial worker would wear? Not it. What do you think you are? A super detective? You're hungover. These are just dents in the mud. No pattern emerges for the time being. There, he still is, looking right through you with his white eyes. The body below is entirely dedicated to that corpse smell. Emitting it is all it does now. The smell is repulsive. It pushes in from your mouth, more instant and more familiar than anything you expected, more fever than odor. It fills your mind, flushing you from within. Too late, it's impossible to keep in. Your body curls and pushes it out, burst by burst. Until a pool of vomit lies under your feet and your throat stings from the stomach acid. It's okay, happens to everyone. Keep it. The hangover is clearly making this worse for you. You could use some ammonia to clear your head. If you can handle the headache, some officers use it to deal with cadaverine odor. I can't handle the headache. It's more likely he can handle the smell, unlike you. There is Fritz nearby, east of the hostel. They usually have a small apothecary. If they don't, there's a greenhouse here, and a gardener with a wheelbarrow on the corner of the whirling in rags. If she works here, she might have something for the smell. Acquiring ammonia will provide a modifier to the white check. Modifiers make checks easier and allow you to retry them. RCM in Martinez. What can I help you with? We don't see a lot of police around here, that's all. Of course. What can I help you with? Sure, I'm done with it. Go easy on that stuff. It gave me a terrible headache. Of course. Where to? There's the pier, the Cape Side apartment buildings, some more tenements. Not a lot, really. The harbor gate. Some kind of commotion, I think. I don't follow the local politics. A fleet store, too. Some shops and a bridge. The canal bridge leads to the coast, but it's broken, I think. Some kind of accident, probably. Just coast. There's a little fishing village there, and a fish market. But that got closed down ages ago. It's just water. No, actually, I think they call it the Martinez Inlet. 
There are some islands in the bay, but they're hard to reach. No problem. Of course. I won't hold you back. Her gloves. You get the feeling that you need them. You have a dead body to deal with after all. Sure. Keep them. I have another pair. There, he still is, looking right through you with his white eyes. The body below is entirely dedicated to that corpse smell. Emitting it is all it does now. The ammonia only makes it worse. The combination forces tears out of your ducts. You manage to keep it in once. The second time, not so much. When the vomiting is done, your cheeks are wet with tears. Now does the wind right now. The weight is reassuring, like a crenel on solid fortification. Pat, pat, pat. I've seen strong men turn themselves inside out for hours. You are facing tough odds here. Alcohol withdrawal makes it considerably harder. I've seen captains puke their guts out. It never gets easier. You never get used to the smell. Every Monday is cadaver day. Throw up, investigate. Throw up, initial autopsy. Throw up, baguette. Then drive to the station. Maybe throw up on the way there, if you didn't bag the thing tight enough. I think I've lost my sense of smell. Not being hungover helps too. No. This is a two-man assignment, because it needs two officers to complete. I need your help. You need to get your shit together. No, it's not, officer. Then the world will turn away from you and leave you behind. We should go talk to the locals. Find something else to do while the wind changes. It's pretty bad right now. You've gained a thought. When this dialogue is over, go to your thought cabinet and internalize it for special bonuses and effects. Give it half an hour. Get yourself together. Then come back and have another go. Hello again, sweetie. I see you've met up with your colleague. The lieutenant nods politely. Wait, who's sweetie? Why, you are, officer. And have you found anyone to be sweet to? You rascal. I'm too old for you, and too married besides. You must forgive me. I'm getting so scatterbrained. 
I completely forgot to introduce myself. I'm Lena. My husband Morel and I are staying with our friend Gary just down the street, but I come here for tea when they're away. This Lena is wacky enough for the Motley Crew. Hire her on the spot. Yes, officer. You look rather dazed. Like a stunned fox. But surely things can't be that bad. Oh my. You know where we are, right? That's right. And where is the Whirling and Rats cafeteria itself located? We're in the city of Revshol, dear. How would I even begin to tell you? Revshol is the most beautiful city in the world. We're fortunate to be here, you and I. I haven't seen very many other cities personally, but everyone says so. Revishol is a rare jewel. This city used to rule the world, though it has seen better days. Speaking of history, you know what year it is, yes? That's right, dear. How splendid. Here, take this pen. Knowledge should always be rewarded. Her relief is palpable. She was getting pretty worried about you there, but now she relaxes her shoulders. I can tell that this is taxing for you, so I'll just ask one more question. What regime are we living under? What mode of government? Actually, we are not. You could say that about almost any other nation, but not Revishol. Try one more time, officer. What mode of government? Oh, sweetie, it's really not. There used to be people who thought that way, other people who wanted those things, but they all went extinct. Revishol is a zone of control led by an alliance of foreign powers called the Coalition. We have almost no government of our own, and certainly no dictatorship of the proletariat. But they still have cops. It is quite disappointing, yes. A lot of people would like some form of representation. There's talk, but for now, the RCM is all we've got. Oh dear. And you were doing so well. There aren't any cops in Rivishal, not in the traditional sense. The status of law enforcement has been a complicated matter since the revolution. But we should stop for today, sweetie. You look like you need a break. Besides, I'm not the best person to explain the big things to anyone. She's scared now. She's realized you really are brain damaged. A defeat, I'm afraid. The people of this archipelago tried to build something new, something different. The rest of the world didn't like it, so they came and ended it. This was 42 years ago. It has something to do with everything. I really don't know how to explain it better. You were doing quite well up until the end, dear. It does look like you're having trouble remembering things. History and places. Remembering reality in a word. It's very odd. A sigh. The lieutenant buries his nose in his notebook. But maybe a... A fresh set of eyes is what the world needs, and while I'm no doctor, such bouts of amnesia are often temporary, so I, I wouldn't worry too much. Someone more educated in sweeping matters. 
Maybe you should ask. No. I'm not an encyclopedia. I won't be a guide either. I'm a detective. Of course. Then I don't know. Someone rich, maybe? Wealthy people are educated. Though I don't know where you would find a wealthy person in Martinez. Yes, dear. Uh, I'm a paraplegic. A paraplegic is someone with limited or no ability to use the lower half of their body. Paraplegia is caused by spinal cord injuries, like falling from a great height, or a grenade explosion. No, dear. I'm not quite that old. Although I was injured in the line of duty. Oh my. What happened? That's how I feel about the accident. I was a training and development manager at a rapidly expanding mail-order shoe company. You'd think it would be a safe job, but I had to be everywhere and, well, once I happened to be under some faulty scaffolding. I was lucky. This was almost 20 years ago and I was compensated exceptionally well. One can only dream of such payoffs nowadays. That's quite all right. I'm used to people asking questions. I know they're thinking about it anyway. Whatever do you mean? Sequence killers? Oh my. But I think you already have a partner, sweetie. A partner who needs you to help him get a corpse down from a tree. Yes, and it seems to me that you do well to stick close to him. He has the look of an upstanding officer of the law. Someone you can lean on, and, sweetie, you are looking unsteady. And even if he weren't there, I don't think you'd have much use for me. Thank you, but... Martinez isn't the most wheelchair-accessible place, you see. I'd slow you down. Perhaps another time. Of course, dear. Good luck with your case.